This video is sponsored by DraftKings. What's up, everybody? We got a good fight coming up this weekend. UFC 306 in Vegas at the Sphere. Are you flipping kidding me? This was one fight card that I wanted to be on. I'm pretty sure every fighter wanted to be on this card just because it's at the coolest spot ever, the Sphere. I wonder how this fight is gonna go or how they're even gonna film this fight because it's so bright in the arena. Is anybody gonna actually watch the fights like looking at the cage or are they just gonna be looking up at this mask of screen the entire time. I bet it's gonna be so dope to be out there and fight on this massive Sphere TV screen. Anyway, legit, we're gonna be breaking down the main card and I wanna know in the comments down below who you got winning each fight. Let's get it, baby. What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? Football season is kicking off and it's the perfect time to dive into the action with DraftKings. The number one place to bet on touchdowns. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly get $250 in bonus bets Plus, get one month of NFL Plus Premium. That's something we can all celebrate. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. DraftKings is the one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy, where you can join in on all the fun and have the shot to win cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code WONDERBOY and bet just $5 on any wager and get $250 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code WONDERBOY only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's go. So let's get into the video. First fight on the main card, we got my man Ronaldo Rodriguez versus Ode Osborne. Now, this is low key gonna be one of the most intense, I think, and close fitted fights on this main card. I mean, Ronaldo Rodney Rodriguez, fairly new in the UFC, but let me tell you this, this dude is coming to fight. He's in your face, slamming, jamming, a very heavy, heavy hitter, and he's got vicious leg kicks. Do both of these guys got some good knockouts? I mean, my man is like, what? 17 wins, two losses, seven wins by knockout, three by submission, and of course, three first round finishes. Yes, three first round finishes. Even though I do believe he's only got one fight in the UFC, the dude is a monster. Now, both of these guys, I think, are very similar fighters. Ode, on the other hand, is a great striker as well. He's more, I think, of a counter striker, right? Ronaldo Rodriguez is kind of like that Mike Perry in your face. Let's toughen it out. I want to see who's tougher, me or you, kind of in your face, kind of a dog fighter. And my man Ode Osborne is more, I believe, of a counter striker. And I think he's more submission savvy. He's got some wins in the UFC, some arm bars. He doesn't mind finishing guys off of his back in guard, throwing up uh, triangles left and right, but he's also got power in his hands. Very good fight, I believe, to start off this main card, even though Renato Rodriguez has only got one fight in the UFC. Usually you'll see more guys who are in the UFC, who's got wins in the UFC, more fights in the UFC on that main card, but this is an exciting fight. Man, I'm kind of leaning towards my man Ode Osborne on this one just because of his experience in the UFC. And I think he's a great counter striker. I think he's a longer fighter, the taller fighter, and he's got great submission wins. So wherever the fight goes, he's going to be ready for it. I think he's going to be able to counter Ronaldo Rodriguez all day long. Even though Rodriguez is a tough fighter, he's got a heavy leg kicks, he's got to be in close range to throw those scrappy kind of hook strikes. You know what I'm saying? And my man Ode is just, he's got great distance management and great timing. So I'm leaning towards my man Ode Osborne on this fight. Let me know down in the comments below who you got. Now, if you think that first fight is going to be fire, the next fight on the main card, my man Daniel Zellhuber versus Esteban Ribovics. Starting off with Daniel Zellhuber. What a tough kid. Young, only 24 years old, and this dude is already 15 wins, one loss. The dude's on a three-fight winning streak in the UFC with seven wins by knockout, three wins by submission, and five first round finishes, baby. Now, this guy calls himself a freestyle fighter, which suggests that he's good everywhere. But most of the time when you see this guy fighting, high level striking, very good striking, very tall striker, especially for this weight class, likes to switch sides, which is what I love, and loves to throw his round kicks and roundhouse kicks. Very heavy, 
heavy leg kicks, man. Daniel Zellhuber is very tough and relentless in your face the whole time, but he's very wary. He's not in your face overboard. Like he's not trying to get in your face. He's very cautious. He's the type of fighter that literally never lets his opponent off the hook. Never lets his opponent take a breather. If his opponent wants to back up and take a breather, he's not letting it happen. He's in his face. If his opponent is too aggressive, he's got great distance management to be able to pick his opponent apart. He doesn't mind using his wrestling. He's very like deep, a defensive grappler. He will throw guillotines if the guy tries to take him down. He doesn't mind going looking for the takedown either. This dude is awesome. And his opponent, Esteban Ribovix, man. This guy right here. Dude, I'm so hyped for this fight just because of this dude's last win over Terrence McKinney. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it is on YouTube. Go check it out. Head kick from heck, bruh. I can't say it, dude, I can't say it. This dude is 13 wins, one loss. I do believe he got his first loss in the UFC, first fight in the UFC. The dude is known as a striker, and let me tell you, this guy, bro, did you, did you just hear that, bro? Did I just burp while I was talking? I had me a massive steak before I came up here and did this, so pardon me. It's not like you don't do it either. Anyway, this dude's got seven wins by knockout, five wins by submission, and seven first round finishes. This guy right here is very heavy handed. Both of these guys, very similar. They've got grappling skills, but I do believe their grappling skills are gonna cancel each other out. These guys wanna stand and bang, all right? I don't believe you're gonna see some grappling out of these two unless, I don't know, Khabib jumps in the octagon and starts trying to grapple somebody. It's not happening. They're gonna keep the fight standing. They're gonna bang it out. They're gonna see who is the best striker in that division. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm there 100% of the way in this lightweight division fight. Let me know in the comments who you got in this fight. Esteban Ribovic or my man Daniel Steelhuber. All right, I am leaning towards my man Oh, dude, I don't know, bro. I, I think Esteban could possibly win it, even though he's the shorter fighter, but he's got great timing and he's got heavy, heavy hands, man. And he's got those kicks that come from nowhere. Go see the McKinney fight, guys. Go check it out right now. I'm leaning towards my man Esteban. Third fight on the main card and it just keeps getting better and better. Brian Ortega is back versus Diego Lopez. Now we all know what happened last time. Brian Ortega couldn't fight Diego Lopez still fought against my man Iggy on like a four hour notice. Like what the flip dip. I do believe this is Diego Lopez's toughest fight today. Besides the Iggy fight, I mean, that's gotta be tough on just anybody. Having like a fighter change that quick on like a, a, a four hour, I think it was less than that. Maybe two hour notice, I'm not sure. But the dude, Diego Lopez is just the man, bro. This guy's got 25 wins with only six losses. And let me tell you, man, pretty even across the board. 10 wins by knockout, 12 wins by submission, and 15 first round finishes. That's more than most guys have fights in the UFC. Just his first round finishes. That is ridiculous, man. The dude's fairly young. I mean, he's been in the UFC. He's been on a tear. I suggest you go watch that Iggy fight. That just brings out the best in my man, uh, Lopez. So hopefully you go back and check out that fight. But the guy is explosive, man. He's got great hands, knockout power. Doesn't mind going to the ground. He can scramble for days. If he don't want to go down, he's not going down. He is scrambling like a mamma jamma to get back up to his feet so he can put you to sleep. You will go to sleep or he will put you to sleep. Now, I think this is gonna be a very huge problem for Brian Ortega, just because of the explosiveness of this guy. And the guy doesn't get tired at all. He went five, five in a round. The guy doesn't get tired. And I think that's a problem. I mean, Brian Ortega is notorious for kind of fading later on in the rounds. Brian Ortega reminds me, striking wise, like a Diaz brother, uh, Nate or uh, Nick Diaz. He beats you up with volume, he gets you to shoot, and then he subs you. He guillotines you, man. He takes you out. He puts you to sleep as well. So I think Lopez's grappling is good enough to be able to stay out of those situations. If he can keep that fight standing, I do believe Diego's got it. If he's not careful, and if, if he decides for some reason to shoot on Brian Ortega, that's when he can get in some deep trouble. Brian Ortega is very submission savvy, especially defensively. He's got Darcy's, he's got guillotines for days. So you gotta watch out for that. I'm going on a limb here, and I'm going. To, I'm going to go for my man Lopez, bro. I think Lopez can pull it off. He's 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 young. He seems stress free, right? My man, you know Brian Ortega has had some things going on in his life. 
I don't want to get, I don't know what it is, but he wasn't able to fight last time. I don't know if that was an injury or not, but I haven't seen him in a while. So maybe that has a deciding factor in this fight. Diego Lopez, he's, he's been he's been consistent and he is hungry. So that's why I'm leaning towards my man Lopez. Again, I might be wrong, dude. I am terrible when it comes to picking fights, but man, I think this is such a good fight, man. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know in the comments down below who you got when, boom. Next up, ladies and gents, this is the co-main event of the evening, and I'm looking forward to it. It is gonna be awesome. This is Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. Three? Are you kidding me? Three. We all know what happened the first time, all right? It was a back and forth fight. I think Shevchenko was winning the fight. But let me tell you, Alexa Grasso has got some hands on her. She doesn't mind switching sides. But the first fight, I do believe Valentina Shevchenko was kind of getting the best of her a little bit, maybe in the striking exchanges. But Alexa Grasso was there right back in her face. But, dude, fourth round. It reminds me of the Chris Wyman and Luke Rockhold fight when Chris Wyman tried to throw the spin kick. And uh, Luke Rockhold ends up like taking him down and, and finishing him and everybody blamed me because he thought I taught him the spin kick, which I didn't, so get it right, people. Um, Valentina Shevchenko went to throw a spin back kick and I guess turned her back for a little too long and Alexa Grasso jumped on her back like a freaking Ninja Turtle and ends up submitting Shevchenko in the fourth round, their first fight, being the champ. Now, Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko, two, didn't expect this part. In the second fight, Shevchenko was the aggressor, especially when it comes to the grappling exchanges. Shevchenko was taking Grasso down. Now, Alexa Grasso, her striking looked a lot better. She was switching sides, throwing Shevchenko off just a little bit, but it was almost like Shevchenko was a little afraid to commit to any power shots. Like she was hitting her strikes, but she was kind of backing out before Grasso could really do anything or try to counter her or try to grab a hold of her. Even though Shevchenko was initiating the wrestling, taking her down, there were some great scrambles, they ended up fighting to a split decision draw. Ended up being a draw, man, which is super rare. Both of these girls, phenomenal athletes. Every time you see these girls come back, they they, yeah, they make these like micro adjustments, these huge changes as well when it comes to their growth. So I wonder what's going to happen. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna win this fight. I love both of these guys. I got to hang. I, I got to hang out with Valentina Shevchenko in Abu Dhabi. Like, what the flip dip, dude? It was so cool. So love you, Shevchenko. But Grasso is also an amazing fighter as well, and she and she grows every time she steps out there. Shevchenko is known for her for her striking. She's got some of the best striking in MMA, like hands down. She's very very good, very sharp, very fast. Got great cardio. She adjusts when she's out there during the fight, which is fun to see. And Alexa Grasso, she's the exact same. Phenomenal grappler. Her striking is getting better, which is why they fought to a draw, I believe, their second fight. And just continuing to grow, just to blow our minds left and right. Like, I don't know who's going to win this fight, to be honest with you. All right? I'll leave that up to you guys. I want to see both of them win, which is, I hate it, dude. I wish I could just pick. And of course, main event, Sean O'Malley versus Marab. Dvalishvili. Dvalishvili. Say it how you read it. That's how I'm gonna say it, all right? That's how you pronounce it today. Sean O'Malley, striker, extraordinaire, who TKO'd Aljamain Sterling, which Marab and Aljo are like best buds. So you know Marab is looking for vengeance, dude. He's trying to go out there and he's trying to just manhandle O'Malley. You got the grappler and cardio dude gas tank for days. I know I'm way heavier than this guy, but I would not want to go out there and face off against Marab, all right? Just because he's so wiry and fast and just hard to deal with, even no matter what size you are, he's a, he's a problem. And then you got O'Malley, distance management genius, okay? He's a sniper when it comes to his strikes. He's very crafty. He's throwing spin kicks left and right, flying knees, stuff that you've never seen before in your life, and he's throwing it. And of course, the hair. I think that gives him powers. It is like that dude from Dragon Ball Z. He's one of the uh, gods of destruction. I forgot his name, but that's what he reminds me of. Slash the Joker, kind of, with the, the cool colors. It just reminds me of the movie. But, um... <sighs> So much to think about in this fight. We know how each one of these guys fights, correct? It's just at this level, who shows up? 
Who shows up that day, that night? And I've been in situations where I know that I'm better than my than my opponent, but so, for some some flipping reason, I just don't show up. And it's like, where am I right now? Is this real life? Am I actually out here getting ready to punch this guy in the face? While I'm in the cage, I'm thinking this. It's like, I shouldn't be thinking this. Like, whoever shows up that night is getting the dub. It's, it's just like the co-main event. It's a flipping coin toss. Jesus Louise, if Marab shoots from afar, he's gonna end up running into a knee. O'Malley's distance management is so on point and so good. Like he knows if you're moving within an inch towards him or an inch away, and he's taking advantage of every space you give him. Every space, every little mistake that you make, any opening, he's taking advantage of it. Marab, his goal is to tire you down. His goal is to beat you mentally, Physically, emotionally, he's breaking your spirit. That's what he does. He gets in your face and he keeps up a pace that most people cannot deal with. Now, if I was Marab and I'm going out there getting ready to face off to this guy, I gotta get close, all right? I've got to close that gap right off the bat. Obviously, you gotta throw your feints, man. You can't just run in there against somebody like O'Malley, you get put to sleep. So you gotta be smart when it comes to closing the gap. You gotta get this guy to the cage. You gotta lay on him. You gotta make this guy constantly get up so he tires out. His striking will slow down if that happens. It will. It's just, you gotta make it happen. You gotta get there. You gotta get a hold of that guy. If you can get all his pinky, you better hold on. Now, O'Malley, wait for the opening. Wait for this guy to close the gap and then take advantage of it, all right? You wanna disappear, reappear somewhere else off at an angle, throw your strikes. When Marab tries to adjust and face you, you disappear again and you end up on the other side. Boom, angle changes, O'Malley can do that. And then you pick him apart that way. You frustrate the guy. You frustrate him with your length, your snappiness, your trickiness, which is gonna get this dude to shoot from afar, okay? And when he does shoot, that's when you take advantage of it, boom. There, boom, a genius, dude. I just gave you the game plan for both fighters, right? Flipping there, easier said than done. <sighs> I'm looking forward to it, guys. You know what, I'm just gonna throw this out. We may go live for this fight. Let me know if you want us to go live. It's up to you if we go live or not. How many likes we get, how many views we get. Share this with people, all right? If we get a lot of likes, then we will go live and hang out with you guys during this fight, all right? That's all I got, guys. It's almost 1 a.m. right now. I'm ready for some Z's. As you can tell, I'm delirious. It's okay though, it's a little more exciting. I'm having a good time, you're having a good time, but I love you. Hit that subscribe button, throw some comments down below. And of course, let me know if you guys want us to go live or not for this fight, all right? Peace.